I've got a two-channel interview clip here that my voice is on channel one, the guest voice is on channel two. If I select this clip and go over to the inspector, we can see that it's flagged as a stereo clip. Well, what that means is if I edit it down to the timeline as a stereo clip, both the left and the right channel are displayed as a single waveform. By the way, you see these little ghosted back things? Those are called reference waveforms. And what that is is under Final Cut Preferences, under Editing, when Audio Show Reference Waveforms is checked, what that does is it displays these ghosted back waveforms as if the audio were playing as loud as it possibly could. Uh, it's, it's nice if you like it. It does no harm to have it be displayed, but just to keep our life simpler, I'm going to turn it off. Again, it does not make any difference to the playback. It's simply a display function to help you better see your waveforms. Now, the problem is, is that I have both channels on the timeline, but I want to be able to adjust my voice separate from the guest's voice. To do that, select the clip, go up to the inspector, and change this to dual channel mono. Now, as I scroll down here to see this, you can see there's my voice as I'm asking questions, and there's the guest's voice as they're answering questions. If I click here and hit the play button, he's also using the Core Melt series of plugins, which we also want to talk with him about. Because I'm playing inside here, I just hear my voice. If I click down here, media to writers and editors um, as fast as possible. If I don't want to hear my questions, I want to record them for reference but not have them play back, just uncheck it, and now you don't hear me. To enable my voice, check this back again. What I really want to do is I want to be able to see these in a timeline. So first I had to switch this to dual channel mono in the inspector, select the clip, go up to the clip menu, and go down to expand audio components. Not audio video, but audio components. And now we see my channel on top and the guest channel down below. And we can clearly see the difference between where my voice is, right up here, and where the guest voice is. A series of plugins, which we also want to talk with him about as well. Will, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Larry. Tell us what Authentic Entertainment does. What are you guys working on right now? Basically, we're just coming out of a... Uh... Okay, so let's just zoom in a bit here. Command plus. Let's select the razor blade tool. I'm going to cut this clip. Let's just make everything smaller here make this a little bit easier to see what's going on. There we go. Close that. Now, what I've done is there's my clip up here, and here's the audio channels underneath it. I can cut this using the razor blade tool, or I can position the playhead where I want the cut to occur, and type Command B, and it cuts the clip. So I'm going to keep that question, and I want to get rid of this question, and I want to get rid of this question. So I'm just cutting. Let's get rid of the intro, highlight that, hit the delete key, let's get rid of this, hit the delete key, and let's just get rid of one more, put the playhead where I want to cut, command B, get rid of here, and now watch this. Because these are separate channels, I can now trim this right there, and I can trim this because there's a cut, so I can, I can trim so I just hear my question, just hear the guest's answer, and I've got complete gain control over my voice to make it louder or softer, and gain control over the guest voice to make it louder or softer. And I can do the exact same thing over here. So with, with multiple tracks of audio, I can trim each independently. I can adjust the levels independently. This gives us all the flexibility we need to be able to hear just what we want to hear when we want to hear it. Remember, we needed to change the clip from stereo to dual channel mono in the inspector. Then go to the clip menu and select expand audio components. When you're done, select the clip, go back to clip and say collapse audio components. And now it behaves as though it's a single clip, even though you hear my voice first. Challenges in editing reality TV. Um, I think dealing with high... Ta-da! And same thing over here. 140 to 1. We have on the average... So this was coming off channel 1, that's channel 2, channel 1, channel 2. And yet when we look at it inside the timeline, it looks perfectly normal. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, taking a look at the basics of audio for video. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 178. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money.
You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.